Steve got then a smish of Marie told and while I'm false, a cur rive, quick and three o'clock, the shot stemmer skull on Erin Bunskala on PDFT. Hello, everyone. My name is Beryl Healy. We hope that you enjoy the next hour and that you leave this evening's webinar with practical ideas and insights to explore the STEM learning opportunities in the world of the pupils in your classroom. Good evening, everyone. My name is Emma Fitzpatrick. We are really looking forward to exploring STEM in our world with you. We hope you have a nice cuppa and a little treat and you're able to relax and enjoy the content we have prepared for you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Darren Shields. Thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. We know that these are very challenging times for schools, and we hope that this webinar will prove to be useful, thought-provoking, and practical for you. I'll now hand you over to Beryl, who will take us through the introduction. Thanks, Darren. This webinar is going to explore STEM in the world, in our world, through the eyes of the child. First, I will take you through our key messages and the content for exploring STEM in our world and the world of our pupils. Then Mairead, Emma and Darren will explore the themes of our bodies, food and toys and how they can be used to promote the pupils' curiosity and wonder about these familiar items and to inspire them to make their own discoveries about STEM in their world through inquiry learning experiences. These activities are suitable for use by the pupils in your classrooms and very high risk pupils who are learning at home. A themat thematic approach is being used to enable pupils to utilize their literacy and numeracy, numeracy skills across the whole curriculum, while allowing them to apply and develop their existing knowledge and skills. And we'll conclude the webinar by examining some useful web links. We'd love your participation during the webinar and throughout the hour, we'll ask you to take part in some polls which will appear on your screen and help us to interact with each other. If at any stage you have a question, please type it into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, as our colleagues Kathleen, Trina and Michelle will help to answer any of your STEM queries. At the end of the webinar, you'll be directed to a short evaluation form, and we'd really appreciate it if you could fill it in, as your feedback helps to guide us for upcoming webinars. A recording will be available on our website tomorrow, and all web links mentioned will be on our website and on Skullnet. Skullnet. We'd like to find out a little bit more about the teachers joining us today. So you'll see your first poll appearing on screen. And I'll give you a couple of moments to fill it in. Thanks for responding. It's great to see that we've all class levels represented here. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this evening's webinar. And if you'd like us to tweet us during or afterwards, please tag us at PDST Primary STEM using the hashtag STEM or Skull. Also, if you try any of the activities in your classroom, please tag us as we love to see them in action. Before we begin today, tonight's webinar, we'd like to remind you that the key component of our work is individualized school support. And our team of advisors are in hand to support your school in maths, science, STEM and team teaching. In light of current guidelines, our support is temporarily restricted to phone and online support and applications can be made through our website at the address on screen. I'd now like to take you through our key messages for this evening's webinar. STEM integration means planning for learning experiences which explore math, science and, maths and science skills and content meaningfully. STEM learning experiences should be linked to real world contexts. They should harness the pupils' natural curiosity to solve problems in their immediate learning environments. Inquiry-based and playful pedagogies can support pupil learning in STEM in all contexts and all settings. All of the learning experiences explored this evening have been chosen with the key considerations in light of COVID restrictions in mind. We have also included activities that can be easily adapted for blended learning 
and or remote learning for pupils learning from home. Everything that you can see around you started life in someone's imagination, from the mug in your hand to the pen you're using to take notes. Humans need the skills to develop the idea from their imagination into a concrete object to change the world in which we live. By making pupils more aware of STEM in our world and by helping them to develop the necessary skills, we open them to the possibility of being the next person to create a new piece of technology to make our lives more comfortable. Perhaps they will be the person who finds a solution to the problem of plastic pollution in our oceans. By engaging pupils in STEM learning experiences, we help them to develop the curiosity, critical thinking and problem solving skills they'll need in their future. Professor Luke O'Neill is a leading immunologist and chair of biochemistry in Trinity College Dublin. During the current pandemic, he's been educating and informing us about developments in the fight against COVID. But have you ever wondered how he got started on this journey? A third class pupil from Julianstown National School in County Meath, or sorry, Whitecross National School, uh, interviewed him recently to find out. My first question is, why did you become a scientist? Oh, that's a great question, Eve. I have to think about that one now. <laughs> because, uh, well, I suppose when I was in school, it all began in school, really, and I got interested in science as a subject, you know. And when I was your age, probably, I remember when I was your age, uh, our teacher had a great nature table. And I remember vividly the different types of leaves got my imagination, you know, like an oak tree and a beach and all that kind of thing. And I like that. And then when I went to secondary school, um, I did biology. Have you heard of biology? It's a, it's a branch of science all about life. Yeah. Fantastic teacher in, uh, in secondary school. His name was Fran Mooney. I still remember him. And he was just a great teacher. And he got me really interested in biology, I suppose. And then I was very curious about the world. I think we all are, aren't we? And I remember vividly, um, I'm from Bray County, Wicklow. You know Bray, Eva? Yeah. And, and the Wicklow Mountains, I used to go walking up there. And I wondered how they formed, strangely, in my mind. I said, how do these mountains form, you know? And I read about glaciers. Wicklow used to be covered in ice 10 years ago. And it carved out those valleys. And that's really cool, you know? Yeah. So, What's the toughest thing about being a scientist? Oh, no, that's a great... Yeah. So I suppose, well, it's hard work, you know? I mean, so you got to make discoveries. So if you become a scientist, your job is to find out new stuff, you know? And, and when you're a successful scientist, you make a discovery that nobody else has ever made before, which is a real thrill, you know? Because if, imagine you made a discovery that nobody in the world has seen before, because that's what I've managed to do a few times in my life, you know? Like, I, I've discovered key parts of the immune system, which is such a thrill. It's like, um, it's a bit like, remember the guy Christopher Columbus who went to the New World? It's a bit mm -hmm. like a new land for the first time. So, so it's worth it. The hard work all pays off. But secondly, it's great being part of a team. So, so many scientists are, my, my lab have 18 people in at the moment. Can you believe oh it? God. And they all work together, hopefully, and they, and they all help each other. And it's a great sense. That's like being in a football, a sport. I don't know how you play sport. It's like being on a team in sport, you know? And you all kind of help each other and uh, hopefully have a bit of fun. It's, and by the way, it is fun as well. It's great fun. It's mm. tough, but it's fun. Who's your favorite scientist, living or dead? And now, my favourite scientist would be a guy called Charles Darwin. You ever hear of him now? Uh, no. He has a huge big beard. Now, he died, I suppose, 120 years ago, mind you. But he was famous because he discovered a thing called evolution. Now, evolution is how life emerged on the Earth. Because, uh, as we now know, scientists now know that life begins about 4 billion years ago. Can you believe it? It seems like a very long time ago. And the thing called evolution begins to happen. It starts with very primitive life forms. And then they begin to change and adapt. And all these species, all the all life on Earth originates in that first sort of life form that began four billion years ago. And, and it was a thing called evolution. It rolls out. As time goes by, all these species begin to emerge. And this guy, Darwin, he suggested that first. He said, life on Earth is all about evolution. And, and that was so important because it explained why all the plants and animals are here. You know, we have a scientific explanation. What do you think has been the best science discovery and why? Second really important discovery that all uh, excites us is a thing called DNA. Have you heard of DNA, Eva? Yeah. So DNA is the recipe to make any living system. Your body has got DNA and my body has. And DNA is like a recipe. 
and it makes us, it makes all life on earth is made from DNA. And, and three or four people discover that. A guy called what, James Watson, Francis Crick, a woman called Rosalind Franklin, she played a really important part. And a guy called Morris Wilkins, who was actually, his parents were Irish. He was from New Zealand, but his parents were Irish. So, so those four people, they're the ones who discovered the DNA molecule. And that was said it's really important because it explained how, how life is made, I suppose. You know. And we'd love to understand more about the immune system with the coronavirus, because we don't fully understand it because it's a brand new virus. And we're trying to figure out, you know, how the immune system hopefully gets rid of the virus. So, so I've always had uh, had that in the back of my mind that, that the important discoveries will actually help people. Because it's nice to be a scientist because you're discovering things, as I said, right? And that's great. It's a bit like if you solve a puzzle, you know, and that can be satisfying. You know, when you figure, figure it out, we make a jigsaw, say whatever, and oh, that feels good. But then, can you imagine if that might help people? That's the real exciting part in truth. Because now you're helping. Maybe people at every branch of science tries to help in various ways, you see. Thank you so much, and good luck with your science work. Oh, thank you very much, Eva. Keep your fingers crossed. What are we waiting for with COVID, Eva? Do you know what we're all waiting for? Um, a vaccine. A vaccine, precisely, yes. So you keep your fingers crossed, everybody, and, and Mairead as well. Do that, right? Thank you to our young reporter and Professor Neil for that fascinating, fascinating interview which will be available on Skullnet afterwards if you'd like to show it to your class. So perhaps you and your pupils have more questions about what it's like to work as a real scientist. Cell Explorers is a science and outreach program, science education and outreach program, which is based in NUI Galway and which has partnered with universities and institutes of technology all over Ireland. For this year, they're offering pupils in third to sixth classes the opportunity to engage in a live structured chat with a scientist, during which they can find out about their work. A link will be included in our resource list where you can find out more about this program, along with other free science and STEM outreach um, activities for schools. I will now hand you over to Mairead, who's going to explore the theme of Brilliant Bodies. Thanks, Beryl. Our Brilliant Bodies serve as a theme for this next set of activities. Funky Faces, Eyes on the Prize and Da Vinci Dimensions are all inclusive activities which require minimal resources and really lend themselves to differentiation. While we've put a particular slant on the tasks, they can of course be adapted to use in any class or school setting, including infants, multi-grade, Dalti in Gwael Skullina agus Skullina Gwael Funky Faces, as the name may suggest, takes faces as inspiration for this set of thematic learning tasks. This image from the Matt's Eyes online gallery provides a nice learning trigger, developing the skills of reasoning, communicating and expressing, while focusing on symmetry, lines and angles in our faces with pupils in senior classes. For those working in junior and middle classes, this image would also be a nice springboard to explore the work of artists like Vasily Kandinsky, whose work is shown here, or Pete Mondrian. Both Kandinsky and Mondrian are famous for their use of geometric shapes as part of their work. For infants, random collections, for example, leaves, bottle tops, ribbons and the like, which pupils use for sorting, can be used to create faces. This activity can present a rich opportunity for pupils to use positional language as well as descriptive language related to the properties of the various everyday materials they use to make their faces. A quick check-in chat with pupils allows teachers to easily assess as pupils engage in this creative play activity. Once pupils have created their face, they might like to have a go at playing a barrier game with a partner or another child in their pod. While we are suggesting this activity for junior classes, Barrier games can be easily adapted to offer more challenge for middle and senior classes too. The instructions for barrier games can be found in the PDST Shape and Space Manual on page 32. August er lahanak trucka trees and laws lauer kro august spas or squelga. All our PDST manuals are free to download. Is balak e fuktuk august spriul id klihi bakana kun skillana chianga glaki august chianga laurha a orbitch. I Brian Dalti in Martina, August Bian back in Atherhu. Bian or Galti, Trorica simply a horch, no alanuinch. Estesh Ian took Eid, Clicky Bacana, can store Ukla Clock do, August come Tahia all er Hialana a Hogal. 
Building on this, the activity pattern block symmetry, also from the PDST Shape and Space Manual on page 84, challenges pupils to create symmetrical patterns using the pattern blocks. We can see in the picture here, a first class pupil has created a symmetrical face using the blocks. So we're then challenged to add some extra features to their face so as to use at least one block of each colour and shape. This resulted in some glamorous earrings and a few hair extensions too by the looks of things. For blended and distance learning contexts, and for very high risk pupils engaging in learning from home, the website Learning Trajectories have a bank of free digital resources, which will help pupils develop their spatial reasoning and other mathematical skills. So let's take this simple idea a step further and look at how we can also weave in problem solving and number sense tasks. Faces and figures is a low threshold, high ceiling problem solving task building on the previous symmetrical faces activity. By low threshold, we mean all pupils can engage and have a go, while high ceiling means the task can be easily extended to challenge pupils to dig deeper. In this next short video, we'll have a look at how a second class pupil in a school in Leitrim had a go at faces and figures. Listen carefully for how the different strategies of problem solving and number calculation were discussed with the pupil. And keep an eye out for conferencing as a teaching, learning and assessment approach. This open-ended problem solving task is suitable for all ages, abilities and contexts. Instead of making it work like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then I wanted to make it work. Each one is um, going to be worth more than the last one. It had to be symmetrical so that I could draw a line down the middle and then, or fold it in half, and then both sides would be even. Conferencing is used as an assessment and teaching approach here where discussion is had with the pupil about what strategies they've used. Okay, so you've got your numbers all written in. Um, what are you planning to do next? I'm planning to write down um, the biggest numbers first, and then I'm gonna cross them off so that I know that I've used them for the sum. Okay, off you go. Keep working and tell me what you're doing as you're doing it. Um, here, um, I'm doing the seven seven like a double. So then I'm writing down 14. What strategy could you use here? Um, I could use after the units, I can um, make 10. Following this, it's important that pupils are given the opportunity to come together to share strategies and solutions with each other. Have a go at your class and see what strategies your pupils can come up with. This is a really simple but rich task which can be changed up in lots of different ways. While the people in the video used quiz and air rods, don't forget you can use any concrete objects from around the classroom, such as counters or cubes. Pupils in senior classes can be challenged further by assigning decimals or fraction values to each piece. Junior pupils could work with numbers one to 10. If you'd like to explore the area of number sense or problem solving strategies with your colleagues in school, or indeed any area of maths or science or STEM, including STEM planning, be sure to apply for free bespoke school support where an advisor from our team would be delighted to work with your school one-to-one. -one. All the details for how to apply will be up again at the end of the webinar. Continuing with the theme of faces, the next activity is called Eyes on the Prize. Did you know that our brain is innately programmed to recognize human faces? When you think about it, one of the first things we do as newborn babies is look at faces. Have a look at this famous image known as the Reuben vase. What do you observe? What do you notice? Optical illusions like this one use colour, light and patterns to create images that can be deceptive or misleading to our brains. Using optical illusions in the classroom present a great opportunity to get chat and discussion going between the pupils. And from an SPHE point of view, it's also a great way to help children see the importance of keeping an open mind and that there's more than one way of looking at things. So now we've had a bit of practice. Let's all have a go at this next one. 
This image has a number of faces hidden within it. It'll take all of your observation skills to try to find them all. I'll give you a few moments to look carefully and then we're going to launch a poll to see how many you think you've found. And don't worry, I will reveal how many are hidden within it. Thanks for your responses. We definitely have some eagle eyed people taking part tonight. So there are nine faces hidden in the image. So be sure to have a go at this one with your pupils in class tomorrow. We'd love to hear how they get on and be sure to tag us in Twitter using the STEM Air Skull hashtag. After exploring illusions, a nice hands on maths, science and art follow up activity for all class levels is for pupils to create their own interactive optical illusion toy. Thomatropes are a homemade spinning toy shown here in this example. These toys work due to a phenomenon known as the persistence of vision. It takes about 0.1 of a second for images to register in our brain. So if the image moves or changes faster than that, your brain combines multiple images. This phenomenon is the basis for movies and animations. For those of you supporting very high risk pupils, the Hugh Lane Gallery have a super online tutorial video on how to make a thaumatrope based on the walking horse sculpture by French artist Edgar Degas. Another quick and easy STEM activity focused on our eyes, requiring no materials other than pupils' own bodies, is to get pupils to investigate which of their eyes is dominant. Here are the pupils in third class in St. Patrick's Bury in Limerick investigating this last week. Task cards for this activity are available both in English and Osgwelga from Discover Primary Science and Maths. This next learning experience, Da Vinci Dimensions, uses a skills through content approach, integrating history, science, art and maths. This STEM activity looks at the work of a familiar artist and inventor as inspiration for a classroom inquiry. Renaissance man Leonardo da Vinci was fascinated by human beings' bodies. While the Mona Lisa is probably his most famous art piece, one of his famous STEM-themed drawings, The Vitruvian Man, features on the Italian one euro coin. Da Vinci noticed that while all our bodies are unique, there are special proportional relationships between certain parts of our body. For example, da Vinci believed that our arm span is the same as our height. This sounds bizarre, but could it be true? This statement forms a great basis for a classroom STEM inquiry, which is just what the pupils in Fahert Community National School in County Louth did. Have a look at this short clip, which shows pupils developing their estimation, measuring and analysing skills as part of their investigation. <laughs> As you saw in that last video, the pupils in the multi-grade third to sixth developed their estimation and measuring skills using lots of different equipment. They also needed to use their understanding of place value to calculate and compare their measurements. For those working with junior classes, this activity could be adapted by using non-standard units to compare measurements, 
for example, cubes or lollipop sticks. If you'd like to try this or other body proportion investigations, you'll find some nice suggestions on page 45 of the Matt's Eyes resource pack. Similar to our PDST manuals, this ever popular resource is also free to download. As we saw in that last video, investigation results aren't always clear cut or conclusive. This is hard sometimes, but as Luke O'Neill told us earlier on, this is part of working like a scientist. Reflection prompts like the ones on these posters from Discover Primary Science and Maths are a great resource for the classroom. They're also a nice tool for pupils to self-assess, keeping the focus on the learning process rather than the product. These reflection prompts should be discussed orally first, using an approach like Think, Pair, Share. Pupils can then record their reflections in their copybook or learning journal using pictures, writing, or using a digital tool such as Seesaw. I hope you've gotten some STEM-tastic ideas from Funky Faces, Eyes on the Prize and Da Vinci Dimensions, all focused on the theme of brilliant bodies. I'll now pass you over to Emma, who is definitely going to provide you with some more food for thought for STEM learning through the eyes of your pupils. Over to you, Emma. Thanks, Mairead, for all those brilliant STEM-tastic ideas. Is it lunchtime yet, teacher? Many of us hear this mantra on a daily basis. And with that in mind, for our theme, our second theme tonight, we are going to explore fabulous food. Food is a big part of a child's daily routine, and this makes the theme of food a valuable context for learning in their world. In this section, we have chosen three activities which you can use to explore the theme of food. Our activities are lovely lunches, scrumptious sambos, and Charlie's chocolate. The first part of our lovely lunches is looking at our lunch boxes with STEM eyes. We all have STEM eyes, but we can sometimes be blind to the maths and science in the world around us. STEM eyes encourages pupils to meaningfully explore maths and science starting from their real world. These activities are adaptable and suitable for all class groupings, including multigrade. Every day in classrooms, the pupils hear, Anisha Foshti. We are now going to take a moment to look at this image of a child's lunchbox. Open your STEM eyes and what do you see? Isn't it interesting to see that you all saw something different when you looked at the lunchbox? The same could be said if you pose this question tomorrow with your class. In doing this activity with your class, do you need to begin with focus questions such as, can anyone see any shapes in their lunch? Can you see any food that grows in the ground? If the pupils in your class had experience with this type of activity, you could lead with questions that are more open-ended such as, what do you see? What do you wonder? This activity can be done from infants to sixth and even your very high risk pupils can join in. These discussions can happen in pairs, in their pods or as a whole class. It, this activity is an excellent opportunity for you to assess pupils prior knowledge in the areas of maths and science. The pupils could add their observations to their learning journal. In a multi-grade class, younger pupils could draw a picture while the older pupils can add annotations. This could be in written, pictorial or digital form. Your very high risk pupils at home could add their ideas to a class Padlet. The talk and discussion that this activity will generate could be the basis for further teaching and learning. Developing their STEM eyes will help sharpen how they see maths and science in their world. So now that our STEM eyes are open, Let's use our lunch boxes to focus on one area, such as data. By collecting data on the recyclables and non-recyclables in their lunch boxes, 
we are meaningfully integrating maths and science. In this image, you can see how infants have sorted the materials from their lunchboxes into the compost bin and the recycling bin using the Venn diagram. This activity can be found in our data and chance manual on page 33. Further up the school, there is lots of scope for development on the data we collect from looking at our lunchbox with STEM eyes. This could include questionnaires or tally charts. Consider how pupils will represent this data from pictograms to pie charts and frequency charts. PDST data and chance manuals are free to download and are full of rich learning experiences that you could tailor to your class at any level. Sometimes seeing is believing, so here's an example of how an activity from our data and chance manual has been adapted to the theme of food. In this activity, the pupils are posed with a problem on how we fill our sandwich when given a limited selection. Pupils are asked, how many ways can you fill your sandwich? How will you remember your choices? Is there a different way to fill your sandwich? Record your findings and share your strategy with your group. This is a great low threshold, high ceiling task, which is accessible for all and extendable for some. When recording, the pupils could use play food, colour cubes, drawings, or a tree diagram. Regardless of how the fillings are represented, what is helpful is some way to account systematically for all the possibilities. It is helpful for the pupils to realise for themselves a way to represent their findings. How will they know they have found all their possibilities and can they prove it? We are developing the pupils' problem-solving skills by working systematically. This task could be extended by increasing the number of fill-ins from three to four or even more. And you'll find this activity under the title Three Block Tower on page 30 of our data and chance, chance manuals. So now time for some scrum, scrumptious sambos. In this section, we are going to look at the skill of questioning and inquiry based learning. In Luke O'Neill's video, he spoke about his wonderings as a young child and how this sparked his curiosity and imagination. We want to encourage pupils to wonder and be curious about the world around them. And one way to do this is through the use of a wonder wall. A wonder wall is where we show an image to our pupils and ask them to pose questions or wonderings on them. When choosing the image, the pupil, the teacher should have specific curricular focus, such as materials or living things. In the beginning, the teacher may need to scaffold questioning questions with prompts such as, I wonder. But over time, the pupil's natural curiosity will come to the fore. This activity provides opportunities for distance and blended learning. A class including your very high risk pupils could add their questions to a class padlet or on the class digital learning platform. Have a look at the lunchbox again and see what questions the pupils in second class posed when they looked at it. Can you think of any others? With all these questions come answers or the search for answers. So how do we do that? Firstly, we need to acknowledge all questions and we as teachers may not know the answer to them all and that's okay. Don't shy away from an activity such as this because you don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of everything. We want to equip the pupils with the tools to find out the answers. This could include asking an expert, such as another teacher in the school, a parent, or someone who has a little extra knowledge on the topic. Alternatively, pupils could research in a book, search online, or perhaps find the answer themselves by carrying out an inquiry like a real scientist. Empowering pupils to find the solution is a vital part of our role as educators. Next, we have a video of an inquiry. The aim of this inquiry was to find the best material for keeping sandwiches fresh and scrumptious. Listen as Ella explains the process for their inquiry. First, we had to decide on our question. We did this in groups. I love chatting with my friends. Once we decided on our question, it was time to get planning. We looked at and discussed different types of materials. We decided on kitchen roll, tin foil and cling film. We predicted cling film would keep our sandwich fresher 
because that's what mom uses. Working like real scientists, we kept our test fair. To do this, we kept the size of the materials, where we kept the bread, and the time the same. Measuring cling film with a ruler is tricky, and it took us a few goes before we got it right. The only thing we changed was the material covering the bread. We waited patiently to see what would happen. After a couple of days, it was time to check. We, we thought we would have to wait for the mold to show, but the bread went hard. We found out the tin foil kept the bread fresher. Now we really want to know why the tin foil is the best. So as you saw in the video, a child-led inquiry gives pupils the opportunity to work like real scientists, thinking or wondering up the big questions, deciding how to carry out their inquiry, working as part of a team, and best of all, having fun. When teaching inquiry, the teacher may have to nudge the pupils in the right direction to begin with. This can be done with carefully crafted questions that guide the pupils through the stages of exploration, discussion, prediction, investigation, and, ev and evaluation. If using a blended learning approach, the planning and exploration part of this lesson could take place in school, and perhaps the pupils could carry out the inquiry at home. Communication of results and reflections on the inquiry could subsequently be discussed back in class. Our very high risk pupils could also carry out this inquiry, sharing their findings on the class digital learning platform through audio, video or print. For Charlie's Chocolate, we are going to explore how we can use storybooks to develop pupils' curiosity and interest in science, maths and STEM. Stories are a great way to hook pupils' attention, while also providing an opportunity to develop science, maths and STEM concepts. As well as deepening their understanding, using storybooks can also help to develop skill in many areas of the curriculum. Well-selected books can further enhance pupils' understanding about their world around them and ignite their curiosity. Children's stories provide a great context for STEM. It makes abstract concepts more concrete and provides opportunities for pupils to get a bigger sense of the picture. In our resources section, you will find a link to our Padlets for maths and science books. They are divided into the different strand areas of the curriculum for ease of use. You may remember back from our STEM Savalia series, we also looked at books suitable for inspiring STEM activities. In that webinar, we chose The Gruffalo, which most will consider a, su a story suitable for infants. Although I have to say it's one of my favorites. Sometimes when we think of stories, we automatically think of titles that are suitable for younger pupils. So tonight we are going to explore how we can use story in the senior classes to develop a thematic approach to learning in STEM. For tonight, we have chosen a favourite of all ages, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Charlie is a monarch in the chocolate or fall of scale of how does the story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory link in with maths and science in our curriculum? We can see from the poplet here, this story offers vast opportunities to integrate maths and science skills and content meaningfully. Take a moment to look at the image on your screen. I'm sure there are many ideas floating around your head. If we take materials and change, one question we could focus on could be, how does the chocolate river flow? This gives us an opportunity to investigate how chocolate changes from solid to liquid and vice versa. From a maths perspective, there are lots of opportunities for problem solving, such as examining how many bars Charlie would receive in a lifetime supply of chocolate. A lovely STEM project to tie all these areas together would be to create the next big idea. This draws on people's imagination and creativity as each child can personally design what they consider to be the next big idea for Charlie's Chocolate Factory. What do we mean by big idea? It could be a machine designed like a dentist chair to create a sweet that keeps your teeth healthy, or it could be a lollipop that makes you run faster. The key here is that the big idea comes from the pupils themselves. 
The voice and choice of the pupil is central to this project while being directed by curriculum focused criteria. This is important if you want to develop specific skills and content meaningfully. For this task, we use the newspaper clipping as a stimulus. The pupils are asked to help Charlie develop his next big idea. This is a great opportunity for collaborative teamwork, exploring, researching and designing together. And as with all good STEM projects, pupils will need, will need criteria to guide them through the process, such as what is the purpose of your machine? Label your design with the materials needed. Include any levers, cogs, etc. We have included a sample template in our resources section with some suggested criteria. Feel free to adjust according to your class context and differentiate for various pupil groups in your class. To extend this to a cross-curricular project, pupils could design a marketing strategy to sell their design to Dragon's Den or even create their own TV commercial for a new machine. Here are some of the next big ideas coming from Skull Fordrick in Cardiff County Monaghan. A hullabaloo, a hullabaloo imaginator. This machine combines all your favourite flavours in one delicious sweet. Never be in a rush to eat your ice cream again with Noel's idea of the never melting ice cream machine. The thinker maker. Imagine just having to think about what you'd like to eat for dinner and poof, there it is. This is definitely a machine I could do with at dinner time. And Oshin has created a lollipop to save the world. I'm sure there's some pharmaceutical companies out there who would like to speak with Oshin. So thank you to these pupils for sharing their wonderful ideas with us. What scrum did Leomtious ideas will your class come up with? We would love to see them, so please feel free to share these with us on Twitter. If this has ignited your interest in how you could further develop STEM using a thematic approach, we are here to help and support. You can apply for support tailored to your school. The girl will go through the details at the end. So now before we head over to Darren and his terrific toys, you're going to go back to Beryl, as I believe there has been some questions coming in. Thanks, Emma. Um, Kathleen, Trina and Michelle are busy answering your questions behind the scenes. But actually, Emma, Kate was wondering what resource you used to make the newspaper clipping, as she could see so many ways she could use that across the curriculum and she actually missed the link. OK, um, thanks for that question, Kate. You're dead right. There'd be loads of opportunities to use the newspaper clipping. It's from a website called foddy.com and um, it'll be included in our web links section of our resources. So don't worry if you missed it or anything else. Thanks for the question, Kate. Thanks, Emma. I'm now going to hand you over to Darren, who's ready to delve into the world of terrific toys. Thanks, Beryl. Our final section of this evening's online workshop is entitled Terrific Toys. We've covered the topic of toys in our previous STEM So Wilder webinar, but the topic of toys is always something that is very close to the hearts of children and many adults. So considering the time of year that is fast approaching, we thought this was an ideal time to dig further into the STEM world of toys. In this section, we aim to explore the real world context of toys using maths, science, and STEM content and skills in a meaningful way. In this section, we explore the world of toys through fun favorites, savvy shoppers, and the toy transporter. As a child growing up, the magic of the Late Late Toy Show was the highlight of the year next to Christmas morning itself. Once the show was over, it was straight to bed, but the next morning and forevermore, I tinkered and imagined with the toys I had. What world was I going to introduce my toys to next? Which family member was going to play and lose the next board game or card game with me? This was and continues to be the real world of toys that children live in. In Fun Favourites, we will look at using the theme of toys and games to support the teaching and learning of maths and science skills through content. Through talk and discussion, inquiry and collaboration, we can support people's abilities to problem solve, analyze, observe, and communicate and express in content areas such as shape and space, number, materials, and energy and forces. The activity, same but different, can be used for teaching skills through content in math and science in junior, multi-grade, senior, and home learning environments. Two things are placed side by side and are compared, with the focus and discussion around how both are the same and how they are different. Here is one such example of two toys. How are these toys trucks the same? But how are they also different? People's responses could range from both trucks are the same as they have wheels, 
but they are a different color. Do trucks, uh, do the trucks are the same as they have the same type of lever or different type, same type of lever attached to the trailer, but are different because their windscreens are different shapes. One is a rectangle and one is a trapezium. It's important to notice the word but. People are asked to consider how both images can be both the same, but different at the same time. This enables pupils to use maths and science language in contexts that are real to them. Developing their ability to reason and justify, make connections with their world and mathematical concepts and scientific knowledge. Watch this short video of a student explaining their mathematical reasoning and understanding when comparing Lego pieces. How are they the same, but different? These things are all the same because they're all Lego. And when they're different, they're all different colors. And this one's worth fun. Wait, this one's a square story. This one is a mini rectangle. This one is a long rectangle. Assessment is embedded throughout this activity. The class teacher is continually able to gather information about the pupils' maths and science language development, as well as maths and science skills and content understanding. Why not encourage pupils to make their own same but different games, using their own toys or selected toys from the classroom? For more detailed background information on how to run these activities, visit the website at the bottom of the screen. Following on from comparing toys, we move to another firm fun favourite for all ages, and class levels ice games. Such activities are accessible to all pupils as they don't require a huge amount of resources or setup. A simple set of rules and off we go. We've included a few examples of our own favourites that can be easily adapted for junior, middle, senior and multi-grade levels. Instructions on how to play these games are available on the Enrich website and are also included in our resource section on Skullnet. Consider encouraging pupils to adapt or change these games or come up with new dice games themselves. Some questions that could guide student thinking include, can we simplify this game? How can we make this game more challenging? Can we use different mathematical operations? Could we use extra or less dice to play this game? Can a hot nation or follows Skullnet Kogma? And there are further examples of dice games on Skullnet that have been uploaded for Maths Week 2020 to help you get started. Remember, the possibilities are endless. We now move on to savvy shoppers. We can all remember the joy and excitement of being taken to the toy shop at some stage in our childhoods. There was always great anticipation of walking through the door and the excitement of wanting to play with every toy possible at once. We will aim to bring this feeling of excitement to all class levels and settings through the integration of maths and science skills and content. The following activities are adapted from the PDSD measures manual, which are free to download from our website and are also available on Squelia. This activity is called Catalogue Shopping, adapted from page 297 of the Measures Manual. Store catalogues are a free, useful resource when teaching money. They can form the basis of many open-ended problem-solving activities, which can be easily adapted for multi-grade class settings. Catalogues are also available online for very high-risk pupils working from home. Setting the scene for pupils helps them get engaged, focused and interested in the problem they are going to solve. In this particular scenario, the pupils have been tasked to do all the Christmas shopping for their family. Depending on class levels, you can set differing budgets and shopping criteria. They could be using money in the Astro Toy Shop or a larger budget of a thousand euro in senior classes. In this case, the budget is set at hundred euro. If pupils decide to look through the shopping catalog and to buy presents using the family interest seen on screen. Pupils can work in pairs or in their pods, and can, which can lead to rich mathematical discussion. Did anyone go over or under budget? What was the reason for spending the same or different amounts on each person? What strategy did you use to calculate how much you spent or how much your budget was, le was left? These are all key questions that can be asked throughout the activity for assessing people's progress. The second act activity is called Guess My Receipt. This variation of Guess My Receipt is from page 160 of the measure ma Measures Manual and requires savvy shoppers to investigate a blacked out receipt from a toy shop. Pupils use their toy catalogues, either physical or online, to find out what could the items be? What might they not be? What strategy did pupils use to figure out if their totals were correct? It's important to keep savvy shopping as focused as possible for pupils. Specific criteria could include the items bought were suited for children from 8 to 12 years old, the toys 
bought were outdoor toys, or the toys do not require to be inflated or worked by water. Consider the possibilities for assess assessment here. For example, people could self-assess how they got on with the task using a maths journal. They could reflect on how they enjoy, what they enjoyed about the task. What did they learn? What did they, what did they find challenging? What did, they, what did they need to do for the next time? For this activity, you can make your own receipt by going to the website at the bottom of your screen and create a re receipt for items bought from a toy catalogue that you were using with your class. As our pupils are now skillful, savvy shoppers, using catalogues and receipts, we now can apply these research skills to conducting a web quest. A web quest is an inquiry-based activity whereby pupils use online resources to search for specific information using a prescribed format set out by the teacher. A web quest is, simply, is not simply an activity of gathering facts and information. The tasks set in web quests are organized in such a way that pupils must analyze, evaluate, and critically think whether the information they have obtained is true and accurate. Watch the screencast of how you can access pre-made web quests, web quests available on Skullnet. While in Skullnet, scroll to the bottom of the page and click on World Book Online. Once in World Book Online, you will see there are three sections. One for early learning for junior classes, two for kids from middle to upper primary, and three student section for upper primary and secondary students. Let's click into kids. At the bottom of this section, click on Four Educators and then Educator Tools. Web quests are on the left hand side. In this section, there is a detailed explanation of what a web quest is and its purpose for the use in the classroom. The first web quest is a general web quest, which teachers can print off and give to their students to complete in class or at home in a blended learning scenario. Once this is completed and students are confident on how to research information through this database, why not embark on another web quest on electronic games? Electronic games are toys that are very much part of many people's lives. Why not help deepen their knowledge and understanding about the scientists and inventors behind electronic games? This web quest could then be used to inspire students to think creatively about designing and making their own electronic games for children in the future. So with the thought of designing and making fresh in our minds, the final task for tonight is indeed a design and make activity entitled the Toy Transporter. True design and make encourages pupils' natural creativity, crit critical thinking, and engineering skills for all class levels. Engineers look at a problem, try to solve that problem by designing, building, testing, redesigning, and rebuilding a solution to solve that problem. So how do we introduce this task to pupils of all ages and all class contexts, from junior to senior to multigrade? Setting the scene for pupils is key to getting them engaged and switched on. For this activity, the problem involves moving our favorite toy from one location to another safely. The toy transporter may be needed uh, for moving house, bringing our toy to our friend's house on holidays or to the park to play with. It could even be designed to protect our toy from the slobbery clutches of your baby brother, sister or pet. Have a look at these designs below. They could be used as inspiration for your own class's inventions. They were submitted to an excellent website called Little Inventors, which contains free ideas and resources that can be used in every class level and setting. Zach's design was a toy shield but activated to protect his toy when his baby sister attempted to put it in her mouth. Jessica designed a portable toy carrier to store all her important keepsakes for her dolls. And Leah decided uh, to make a book safe that stored secret treats under lock and key to save for later while reading. These are only three examples of the imagination and creative, think creative thinking that could be cultivated through such a simple design and make activity that is very relevant to the world of children. In light of the current circumstances, greater emphasis and time could be placed on the exploration and design stages in the classroom, while allowing pupils time to make and tinker with their toy transporter at home. Allowing pupils to spend time on their designs, to share ideas, self-assess and peer assess each other's ideas is an important part of the engineer design process, thus inspiring greater levels of creativity, critical thinking and problem solving. Pupils can co-construct the success criteria with their teacher, so they know what to include in their toy transporter. Examples of success criteria and a possible approach to running this task is available in our resources section on Skullnet. Here is a short, short video of a toy transporter made by a very high-risk pupil in third class working from home.
Spending time evaluating and reflecting on the design and make process is a key part in people's understanding of what the next steps are for future design and make activities. Is there anything additional you could add to your toy transporter to make it stronger or safer? Is it possible to make the transporter wider or longer? What was the most difficult part of making your design? What would you change or what would you do differently next and why? We really, we really look forward to seeing some of your variations of the same but different dice games and some imaginative toy transporters. Why not tweet some of the work you've completed with your class to provide inspiration to us all on our Twitter handle at PDSD Primes 10. The very best luck with it all. Thanks, Darren. Before we conclude our webinar, I'm going to give you a moment to have a look at our key messages again. If you have a mobile device, you might like to take a screenshot of this QR code, which will bring you directly to the page on our website with all of the resources mentioned throughout this evening. If you'd like to avail of the online supports from our team, please have a look at the PDST website. And if you click on the STEM tab at the top of the page, you can access all of our supports. Our friends at Skullnet also have a dedicated page for the STEM or Skull webinar series, where you can find all the resources mentioned tonight and in previous webinars. The next edition of STEM Swincha will contain a section on STEM in our world to complement tonight's activities. STEM Swincha is an e-bulletin created by the uh, primary STEM team, which supports teaching, learning and assessment in math, science and STEM for all class levels. If you'd like to apply for school support in STEM, math, science or team teaching, our team of advisors would love the opportunity to support your staff and you can apply at the address on screen. It's currently Science Week and the theme for this year is changing our future. The STEM team have created a resource which can be found at the address on screen to support and inspire you during Science Week. And we'd love it if you shared any activities that you do with your class on Twitter at PDST Primary STEM. There are also many science festivals taking place all over the country. And if you'd like your class to attend a virtual event or to find out more information, if you check out scienceweek.ie. And finally, we'd just like to remind you that registration is now open for the next webinar in our series, STEM or Skull, which is seasonal STEAM, and it's taking place on Tuesday, the 1st of December. Mila, Buikas, the Quilla Dinna, Erin Buiran, PDST, Primary STEM, the Uber Erin webinar show, Kahira, Kathleen, Trina, August, Michelle, if you carry in and up. We hope that you've enjoyed the webinar as much as we have and that now you are inspired to explore the themes of uh, brilliant bodies, fantastic food and terrific toys with your class. And that brings us to the end of our third live webinar from the PDST Primary STEM series, STEM or Skull. Enjoy the rest of your evening, folks. It's long before. So long. So long.